Ebola, Ebola, don't touch your friend. Uh, do you guys ever worry about uh, Ebola? Do you think that's real? No. The government said nobody should eat bush meat. If Ebola was here, a lot of people would be dead. Ebola, no Ebola in Nigeria. Since February 2014, an outbreak of Ebola spread across West Africa, from Guinea to Sierra Leone, and now it's finally reaching the coast of Liberia and its capital, Monrovia. Confirmed by health officials, the deadly virus has already killed seven people in Monrovia. Scientists speculate that a possible cause of the Ebola outbreak might stem from the prevalent consumption of bush meat from animals like monkeys and fruit bats. The scientific concerns surrounding the consumption of bushmeat begin in our genes. Because we share 99% of our DNA with monkeys, the chances of an infectious and incurable disease like Ebola crossing over from a monkey to a human is exponentially higher than with any other animal. Ebola is, is one of those words that you can say it anywhere in the world, and it invokes fear. Dr. Joseph Fair is a renowned virologist who we met working out of a lab near Liberia's capital city of Monrovia. Take me through sort of the life cycle of the Ebola virus if someone catches it, if a person yeah. catches it. So Ebola is, is what we know as a viral hemorrhagic syndrome. And so a syndrome is just like AIDS. Ebola is an aggressive uh, hemorrhagic fever syndrome. Ebola in particular causes the walls of the capillaries to slightly separate and blood starts leaking. You'll get conjunctival injection, which is bleeding into the eye. Uh, that petechial hemorrhage and that leakage ultimately leads to shock and death, just like you would have with sepsis. So you're bleeding out from the inside? Basically, you're bleeding out from the inside. Your blood pressure is lowering to uh, an amount. So you, when your capillaries are leaking, the blood is no longer being transferred through your body effectively. It is a, a very painful and agonizing death that no one would want to go through. Despite the fact that I was now worried about bleeding from my eyes, we headed to a local lab where they were quarantining and testing for Ebola. The lab is an abandoned ape testing facility. Nobody was there save a few scientists with hazmat suits working on the outbreak. Behind those doors was Ebola culture, which was being used to compare to cases of reported Ebola throughout the country to see if it matched up. Can I touch this? Is it safe? Uh, don't touch it. It was it. used. Don't, don't touch it. No, don't touch it. Jesus. How about these masks? They wear these masks? So right in here is where the uh, Ebola the testing is actually safe. happening. So. These are the suits that they wear in here. Um, and I will uh, I'll respect what he says when he says not to touch them because these have already been used. Somehow I feel like this sheet is not protecting me from Ebola. There is a set of personal protective equipment that we wear. When you go inside, we will, you we wear this. We wear this. Okay. Are you uh, scared when you go inside? Scared. Yes. Scared of what? No. <laughs> scared of Ebola. No, uh, that's true, but... Uh, I'm standing out here and I'm scared. Strange. I'm glad my job's out here and your job's in there. It's okay. <laughs> I can dress you and go in there. No, 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 thank you. It's okay. <laughs> Dr. Sar is in charge of all infectious disease testing in Liberia. He's kind of a first line of defense against mysterious disease coming out of Africa. But like many Liberians, Dr. Sar was skeptical about the presence of Ebola. The truth is that we haven't had any except for one case, of course one case constitutes an outbreak, uh, in the Ivory Coast, it's somewhere in the 70s, I think, and that is all. So one since since them in Liberia, no, not anywhere else except now. Culturally, uh, humans have evolved with non-human primates uh, all throughout Africa and Asia. And um, I think something that we don't usually think of in the West is how that they evolved here. They're kept as pets. They're also used as a major food source, uh, aka bushmeat. Uh, now, a monkey is only one part of what you would consider bushmeat. A bush meat, piece of bushmeat would be any animal coming from the forest. Again, most people don't kind of recognize the need for bushmeat. So when you imagine living in the deep forest of Central Africa and or Asia, it's very difficult to raise domestic animals, yet human beings by their nature need protein sources. So bushmeat in many parts of the world still is a necessary part of the diet. There are certain types of bushmeat which we know are more dangerous than others. 
and those particularly are birds, uh, non-human primates, including the chimpanzees, gorillas, monkeys, bats, we're learning, are of great, um, of great concern. But despite the danger, how does one of Liberia's top scientists feel about bushmeat? Yeah. I, no, I will be very dishonest if I tell you, no, I eat bushmeat. The antelopes, they kill them, they dry them, but the meat comes to market. That's what I like most, yeah. But I don't like monkey meat. <laughs> it turns out the very facility we were standing at has a rich history of pandemic disease. A chimpanzee testing facility in the 80s and 90s, it was here that a doctor named Preston Marks discovered HIV-2 in a local pet monkey in a nearby village. While HIV-1, the most common strain of the disease, was discovered to have come from chimpanzees as early as 1959, it was unclear where HIV-2, the less common but still deadly HIV, originated from until Dr. Marx tested a Sudi Mangabe while working at the Institute in Liberia in the late 80s. And I took this picture on my second trip of this young girl in, uh, in, in Lofa County, as well as Liberia, and it's worth a thousand words. I mean, it, look at it. I mean, that, that Sudi Mangabe, which is the species, the only species in, in West Africa that harbors the ancestor to HIV-2. And, and look at it, it's like a, you know, it's just like a cat. It's like a house cat, it's, it's her friend. In an eerie parallel to Dr. Marx discovering HIV-2 in a pet monkey from Lofa, today's Ebola outbreak seems to have also originated from the same place. Lofa, a dense jungle province of Liberia that sits on the border of Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea, is a trading center where hunters from the jungle bring bushmeat to trucks that then head into markets in all three neighboring countries. In an attempt to stop the virus, the governments have banned the bushmeat trade. But Liberians have been ignoring the threat and the ban. In order to find out why, we met up with a local journalist. But turns out he harbored a few Ebola conspiracy theories himself. Here's your friend. I'm interested in this Ebola thing because the feeling in Monrovia and across the whole country is that Ebola never came to Liberia. We are at Waterside, this is the main market, and we are going to the market where they sell bush meat and other food stuff. Apparently the bush meat shop is in the back. Oh shit, the smell is super future. So the Liberian government bans bush meat, totally, right? Yeah. But you can still buy bush meat. You can still buy bush meat because they are telling the Liberian, Liberians not to eat it and they're telling the marketers not to sell it, but people are still selling it because they believe the government is pulling their legs. All right, so why is the government of Liberia saying there's Ebola if there is an Ebola? Apparently, it's a scam to get some money from the international communities, from the donors. It's mainly so because the government is broke. Everybody knows that. The government was able to say that there was $16 billion investment here. They have nothing to show for it. So. A lot of people don't believe that Ebola is here. Official government policy was to ban the sale of bushmeat. However, as we hit the market, we learned how effective that prohibition actually was. Excuse me, madame. We want to buy some meat. Hey, Nagby, what kind of meat is this? These are deer meat. Has that meat caused you any problem? So, what do you believe about Ebola? Before we were born, our great friend was born. You don't believe that Ebola is here? No Ebola in meat. My children and myself were eating it. My husband was eating it. My husband and everybody were eating meat. I don't, I don't know everything that's going on right okay. now. Okay. There's, there's a guy safety. singing well, through a megaphone. Safety. She's screaming at me that there's no Ebola in meat. There's hundreds of like dead deer parts. It's the same God yesterday. It's the same God today. And the same God forever. Somebody put your hands together so thank you, Jesus. Monkeys are both a delicacy and pets. In fact, they're so prevalent, it's hard to make the connection that these cute monkeys could harbor a super virus or create a pandemic. I'm Emmanuel Nangwe, I'm a journalist. Yeah. We just no, no, saw no, no, this guy no, no. randomly on the side of the street. He's got a pet monkey that he got last night from Ivory Coast. His friend wanted to eat it, but he said, no, I'm keeping it as a pet. This is his pet. Yeah. Nobody will eat it. Hey, you want to carry my monkey? Now nah, for test. Carry me and my monkey. Go and test for her. My monkey got no sickness. I got no sickness. Huh? Ebola, you are carrying Ebola to America. You are carrying Ebola to anywhere. Anywhere the government says Ebola is. Let's go there and find Ebola, but Ebola is not here with me. I got Ebola here. 
me, I had more with it. If I die, I die my right. Nagby went to go get more bush meat, while I looked into where I could go buy some monkey meat. Hi, how are you? Yeah, okay, I do. Can I buy some monkey, please? Yeah. Thank you. We came out to the back here, and this woman had like four or five monkeys uh, for sale. So, while the Liberian government theoretically has banned monkey meat, you can still get it. Look at this, just a wheelbarrow full of bush meat right here. You put in the water, you hear soap. Okay. When you soap, then the flesh can and come out. Do you worry about eating this? No, no, it's sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet? Yeah. Very sweet. Good. You like it? It's sweet. Ah, man. Like it. Red now. Red now. I'm very hungry. I'm eating it. Thank you, friend. Thank you. 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 Can we not splatter the monkey all over me, please? Oh my god, I'm getting fucking pegged with Ebola monkey right now. I'm getting fragged with Ebola monkey. Oh, did you want to eat it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do you guys ever worry about uh, Ebola? Do you think that's real? No. Since we got new ourselves, we've been eating this. We've been eating this thing, no harm. Not to harm. All right. Look, you cut yourself. You cut your hand. You cut your hand. Look. You are no problem. No problem. No problem. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Nagby showed us what he had bought for that night's dinner. Okay, what I got was some fresh meat. This is deer meat. Oh, more deer meat. Yeah, you see the from the feet. And this is bush rodent. We call it bush rat. These stuff are delicate, my man. If you give somebody cow meat, they'll prefer this. If you give them fish, they will prefer this. <laughs> Seriously. Is that a claw? It's a claw, yeah. Nagby invited us to his home to watch how his wife prepares the bush meat for a meal. This is the house. Here's my wife, Fatou. And she's coming to prepare the food. What happened? Oh, are you okay? Yeah. What happened with your finger? So it was shopping, so I made a mistake. You cut yourself? Yeah. Actually. Are you okay? Yeah. Were you, cut while you, were you cutting the meat? Yeah. Uh, Just like any other food, if it's cooked, there's not really a problem. It's through the preparation and where you get that blood and body fluid transfer from the rodent to the human. And we actually have found humans with the monkey forms of the viruses. And so those are people that we obviously monitor because those viruses might be the next HIV pandemic. Which sort of meat is this? Yeah. Yeah, meat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that little rat armadillo thing? Yeah, the, the, the groundhog. What do you call groundhog. it? Bush, yeah, bush hog. It's groundhog. The groundhog. The rodent. Yeah, the rodent. One of the dangers, one of the things that the experts warn against is that one of the main sources of transmission is that if you're cutting the bush meat, you're handling the bush meat, and you get a cut, and then you interact with it, that's when disease transmission could occur. So uh, Nagby's wife was preparing a meal for us, and that's exactly what happened. She cut herself while she was cutting the meat. So uh, not an academic fear, something that could really happen. Can we meet this guy's, uh, the owner, your yeah, neighbor? Yeah, let me let me find out if he's there. Okay, thank you. His name is Jacqui, Jacqui, or a nickname for monkey in Liberia. We we'll call it Jacko. So I call, I call, I call it Jackie. <laughs> How long have you had him? Mm, let's say about three years now. Yeah, and he's your pet? Yeah. They say we should not touch people. That means you can lay aside your partner. If that means you cannot eat certain kind of meat, uh, it means that you have, been, you have put a whole lot of people out of business, you see? And the people who even sell the meat within the market, they are there up to this point and meat is still sell there, sold there. What do you think about the idea of eating bush meat? Do you think it's safe? Yeah. Yeah. Eating bush meat, yeah. I don't have no, I don't have no problem eating yeah. bush meat. Oh, you eat bush meat? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you eat monkey? Yeah, I eat monkey. I eat monkey and so forth like that. I eat other animals, but this is my pet. Yeah. You yeah. won't eat this one. No, this one I won't eat. It. And where did he come from? Oh, uh, this is coming from uh, Lofa. It's coming from Lofa. Yeah, Lofa. And isn't that where they had the Ebola outbreak? Yeah, that's where the rumors <laughs> from. Oh, okay. Oh, the rumor. I'm sorry. That's yeah. where the rumors from. <laughs> particularly with non-human primates, monkeys and chimpanzees, etc., 
keeping them as pets, and you imagine like you have a dog. Well, a dog bites you uh, if you keep it as a pet. So does a chimp, so does a monkey. The monkey jump, jump so high. Amen, the monkey jump, it jumps so low. Sometimes I wonder how God ready made these things. The monkey jump, jump, jump so high. Thank you. Currently, the most popular song in Liberia is called Ebola in Town by an artist named Shadow. The week we were in Liberia, we found out he was playing a concert downtown, so we went to go meet him. Now this song is like three weeks old, and it's everywhere in, in every town, every village, every county, and everybody film, everybody radio is playing it, everybody, and um, uh, 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 everything is taking it. So it's like, it's the biggest song right now in the country, and it's the big thing. Shadow's song going viral is an indicator that most Liberians aren't too concerned with Ebola, even as it continues to spread. But in a place where humans and monkeys are in such close proximity, a new virus could emerge that's even more lethal. Some human somewhere, likely here in Africa, is going to eat a monkey with a disease that's never been seen before. Super Ebola, a new strain of AIDS. And according to Joseph, that virus could kill a third of the planet's population. It's not the disease we know. It's the one we don't. When we think about the worst case scenario, it is always a combination of what is the most transmissible combined with what is the most lethal. Nothing is localized anymore. Uh, international trade, uh, transport of people and animals and crops and everything else that comes along with that. You know, what used to happen in one remote corner of Africa can easily spread to Europe or the United States. The next global pandemic exists somewhere. The virus just has to jump that gap the way HIV did decades ago and Ebola did today. And when it does, the planet will be singing a whole different tune. If you like that monkey, don't eat that meat. If you like that babu, I said don't eat that meat. If you like that bado, don't eat that meat. In bola in the